He among you who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. I've been getting reacquainted with Marshall Rosenberg. He founded the Center for Nonviolent Communication, where people are taught to be compassionate listeners and to frame their disputes in terms of unmet needs. According to Rosenberg, this amounts to having to learn an almost entirely new language since the language we have today, not just in the United States, but everywhere, is rooted in the post-hunter-gatherer tradition of domination, hierarchy, retribution, violent justice where some people are considered to be greater and others lesser. Uh, this is divine right of kings, uh, winner take all, pledging allegiance, might makes right, and so on. So that's what I do in those cases. I help people speak a language of life, which is closer to the truth, just what everybody needs, and stay away from this, these enemy images that can easily sound like blame, criticism, attack. And unfortunately, most people aren't taught the language that I am suggesting, so I have to loan it to them when I do mediations at that level. At about the same time that I found Rosenberg on YouTube, a letter to the editor titled, God Wouldn't Send Us to Hell, was published December 17th in the Greenville News. It was written by a man named Alan Landreth. And while Landreth writes as a devout Christian, and I don't know how or whether organized religion factors into Rosenberg's philosophy, I do think that Landreth and Rosenberg would find plenty of common ground. Here's from the last paragraph. God's love is beyond our comprehension. He, she did not give us the greatest gift of free will, only to stand over our lives with the hammer of do right or I'll send you to hell. There is no hell. God is not in a battle for our souls with this being called Satan that so many religions have created. If there was a Satan, God created him too. It is inane to think that God is going to lose any battle with him. Christ was perfect. He said that we could do everything he did and more. The first step in our remembering is to start loving each other. If we could only love each other beyond our own comprehension, I believe God would be truly pleased. I am in no position to judge how accurately Landreth footnoted the Bible, nor would I care to if I were, but judging from the smackdown he got online from other Greenville News subscribers identifying themselves as Christian, I think it's safe to say that Landreth at least colored outside the lines. A subscriber named Cocky wrote, Jesus tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. You can choose hell. It is real, whether you believe in it or not. Life is about choices. I hope we all make wise ones. We shouldn't lean on our own understanding, but trust God with all our heart. Merry Christmas. A subscriber named Bonjour wrote, True justice involves both remunerative justice, rewarding the right, and retributive justice, punishing the wrong. If a sinner chooses to reject the love of God, then God's righteousness demands punishment. Repent or perish. SC Firefox wrote, Alan, I will keep you in my prayers. Landreth replied to that, saying, Thank you, SC Firefox. Anyone who talks to God on my behalf is okay by me. And please don't forget that I love you. Opie One wrote, The writer calls into question his claim to be a Christian. One would expect the literate Christian to have read, understood, and embraced the Bible. Landreth replied, So, Opie One, I can't be a Christian if I'm illiterate? And a subscriber named Road Hazard replied, No, you can't be a Christian if you reject God's word and his son as your savior. If you don't believe in hell, then you reject God's word because Jesus discussed it many times in the New Testament. I'll kick his ass to hear the gospel!
Road Hazard had a great deal to say, rebutting those few subscribers who agreed with Landreth and rebutting Landreth's replies to dissenting subscribers consistently. Pause 93 wrote, Okay, God sends no one to hell, so Hitler and all the great evildoers of the world are living in paradise. That means there is no reason for anyone to love anyone or treat anyone with any kindness. So we love each other and we're kind to each other only because we want to go to heaven and not to hell? Take away the stick and the carrot and we tear each other to pieces? Isn't that what's happening right now? I mean, like, here? Love the upstate agreed with pause 93. Give me a break. Hitler and Mother Teresa having coffee together in eternity. What a quaint image. If Hitler and people like him are in heaven, I don't want to go there. Which puts this person in charge of the guest list, I guess. But a subscriber named Blackfriar disagreed with Pause 93. Isn't that what the preachers preach, that no one is beyond redemption? Don't you want Hitler to have made it to heaven? Or were his sins so personally offensive to you that he should live forever in torment? Road Hazard did not let that slip by. You forget, Blackfriar, salvation comes by belief in Jesus, repenting of your sins, and putting your faith in Jesus alone for salvation. Hitler did none of those things to our knowledge. He believed in himself and made himself a god to the people of Germany. To repent, one must humble himself before God. Oh my goodness. Somebody just when a subscriber named Busiris weighed in on Landreth's side saying, you folks display what is wrong with organized religion better than anyone else could ever hope to do. Road Hazard replied, just remember Busiris, you have been warned. You will stand before God without excuse if you are not saved, which, yes, only you and God know, but based on the fruit of your works, there is cause for concern. You gotta dig down deep, or you gotta suck it up. When subscriber Steve Compton, well, a real name, wrote, I am glad to join Mr. Landreth in proclaiming the good news. It is inconceivable that a loving God would create a literal hell. Road Hazard said again, you have been warned. You will stand before God without excuse. Oh! Toward the end of this discussion thread, Landreth tried to extend an olive branch, writing, Thank you to all who responded to my letter. It evoked just about the responses I anticipated. The majority of those responses demonstrate exactly the point I was making. That is, most believe what they do because they read it somewhere. They don't really examine what's in their heart. To those Christians who spewed only venom in response, I happily say, I love you, and I'll see you in heaven when I sit down to tea with you, Hitler and Mother Teresa. In response to which Road Hazard wrote, Nope, sorry, you will not be there if you have not accepted Christ as your Savior. Only you and God know for sure, but... Based on your letter, there is reason for concern. There is a hell, and anyone that rejects Jesus Christ as their Savior will spend eternity there, period. Go for the last run! Oh! Down goes Jericho! Oh, the with a spear! Happy holidays, Alan Landreth of Traveler's Rest. You seem like a very nice man. And if you get to heaven before I do, please save a place at the table for me and for Roadkill. You'll be surprised to see both of us there, I'm sure. God bless his tormented soul.